there are different ways of visualizing a three-dimensional FDTD grid. Let's start by drawing in the plane of the screen the three components that we already have from the last design challenge. So HY, EZ, and EX. Notice that from the integral form of Maxwell's equations, which I put at the top of this slide, we ultimately want to have four circulating magnetic field components around each of the electric field components in the grid. And we also want to have four circulating electric field components around each of the magnetic fields in the grid. So for example, if we apply Faraday's law to an HY component in the grid, say this one right here, in order to evaluate the left side of Faraday's law, we need to perform a line integral of the four electric fields around that HY component, these here right here. And due to this minus sign, the line integral will be opposite to the right-hand rule. So it, we'll want to sum up these electric fields in the counterclockwise direction. We can then set that quantity that we get on the left side of Faraday's law equal to the right side quantity, which is the average of the dBy dt flux through S, the surface of this grid cell, this uh, square of the grid cell. And of course that is equal to mu, not dHy dt. And Hy is what we have stored for that surface. This is an average quantity. So notice that when we draw this Hy component here in the middle of this square grid cell, the value we are storing at that location is not the value of HY right at this point, right in the middle. It's actually the average value of HY throughout the entire surface of this grid cell. Now, when we only draw the HY, EX, and EZ field components, we don't yet have four magnetic field components circulating around the EXs and the EY, EZs. We only have two magnetic field components, two HYs. So for this EZ, there would be an HY over here and one to the left, and for this EX, there would be an HY above and below. By adding in the rest of the field components, we'll be able to complete these other contour line integrals. The three missing field components will exist in a two-dimensional plane that is one half of a grid cell behind the screen. So here, the X direction, Z direction, so the Y direction by the red hand rule must be into the screen. Let's use a different color to draw the field components that are one half of a grid cell behind the screen. First, let's draw another set of these since I covered that up so much. So this is HY, here's EZ and EX. The three components we're missing for a Cartesian grid are EY, which is right here, EY, pointing into the screen so that it can form a continuous line integral with either EX or EZ. And then we have HX and HZ. Let me draw a few more. So this is HX and EY. So in the positive Y direction, which is into the screen, at every half of a grid cell, there will be alternating layers of the three black components, and then the three red components, and then the three black components again, and so forth as you move along in the Y direction. Something else I like to do is circle the components that share the same integer indices. Since we're starting the grid on EX and EZ components in this plane, these three these six field components will all share the same i and k indices. Notice we have one of each. We have one EX, one EY, and one EZ, and one HX, one HY, and one HZ. If this were the lower left edge of the grid, these six field components would all have i equal one and k equal one. We could make another diagram for the XY plane of this grid in order to visualize which components share the same J indices. At any rate, this is how I like to visualize the grid. You may need to come up with your own way of keeping track of the field components and the corresponding indices. 
If it helps, you can also use something like this diagram of a fully 3D Yi grid cell as shown here, so that you can more easily see the actual positions of the field components in three-dimensional space. The plane of field components that we were modeling in the last design challenge is the vertical slice right down the middle of this grid cell. What we're adding now to make the model three-dimensional are the red planes of field components on the left edge of the cell and here uh, on the right edge. Alternating layers of red and black field components in the y direction. Now we need to choose a plane of components on which to start and end our grid in the y direction. Which plane of three field components, the black or the red, should we start and end our grid in the y direction? 